Lindenville, New York, population 862, epicenter of an outbreak of a mysterious illness. From 1984 to 1987, 214 people from this area in upstate New York became bedridden with flu-like symptoms like sore throats, fevers, and severe fatigue. Most were sick for months. I would sleep 20 hours a day at some times. If you get up, you weren't even awake, you were still tired, you were lucky to get in the shower. Ginger Berg was 14 years old when she first went to see the physician in town, Dr. David Bell, a recent graduate of Boston University Medical School. There were eight children at the time that got sick within uh, two weeks, and it's very clear they all had exactly the same thing. That number grew to 46 young people under the age of 18 who were sick. Six months later, they were still ill, and they were looking for some answers. Nearly three decades later, they're still looking. Ginger and the other Lindenville children were eventually diagnosed with what came to be called chronic fatigue syndrome, or CFS. Dr. Bell, in notifying the Centers for Disease Control, put Lindenville on the map as one of the first reported CFS clusters, and also one of the largest. Because the group was treated and followed for more than 25 years by the same doctor, it has become a kind of laboratory for studying CFS. Today, the disease affects an estimated 17 million people worldwide. It's not known what causes it, how to treat it, and why some people get better while others, like Berg, never recover. She was able to marry and raise six kids, even though she had to spend most days lying down to avoid spells of dizziness. You know, to be out, you know, with everybody and then having an attack happen, you know, I don't know if they think you're on drugs or, you know, what's wrong with you. It's, it's embarrassing, and I don't want to embarrass my kids. We could talk about it this evening if you want. But Dr. Bell, who recently retired from his medical practice, believes this cold case is on the brink of finally being solved. In 2009, scientists published a paper in the journal Science announcing a possible link between a recently discovered retrovirus called XMRV and chronic fatigue syndrome. They found 67% of people with CFS also had XMRV, but the finding has been controversial. Some labs have been unable to replicate the result and remain skeptical as they wait on larger studies. Dr. Bell, a longtime proponent of the theory that some type of virus is to blame for CFS, decided to help a researcher at Cornell test 20 of his former patients. Preliminary results show that 70% of them, including Ginger Berg, came back positive for XMRV. Don Duncanson also tested positive. He, along with his five brothers, were part of the original outbreak. No one wanted to admit you were sick, especially, you know, it was Lindenville syndrome, you know, and people were saying it was fake, and so you just tried to suck it up and, you know, just went on with your life. If XMRV is identified as the cause of CFS, that could mean vindication for Dr. Bell and his patients. It will cause a major paradigm shift. People will say, you know what, this is an infectious disease. Doctors tend to think that if they can't figure out what it is, then it means it doesn't exist. Molly Billings, who asked us not to use bright lights on her because they give her headaches, wasn't part of the original Lindenville cluster. She came down with CFS in 2006 when she was a freshman in high school. She spent the next three years in bed. It's extremely depressing. You live like a hermit. You constantly feel sick. You miss out on everything. Molly's family, who lived just outside Lindenville, turned to Dr. Bell. The specialists have uh, essentially told her that she's making this up because she wants to get attention. This was Molly's senior year, and she was actually wheelchair bound at the time, and we would just take her in and set her up in these poses. Molly has recovered enough to attend community college classes twice a week. Dr. Bell recently told her that she too tested positive for XMRV. I think the fact that I have it is awesome because it gives me an answer, or at least part of an answer I've been looking for. Though some in the scientific community find that answer premature, the possible link has led the American Red Cross to bar blood donations from people diagnosed with CFS. 
how do you tell someone potentially that you're dating? Not only that you're sick, but it's you're sick in a way that you can't donate blood to a blood bank because they they fear it's you know you could contaminate the blood supply. That just doesn't sound good. Federal health officials are stepping in, doing multiple studies involving hundreds of CFS patients around the country. But even if it's determined that XMRV causes the illness, that will only solve part of the mystery. The other part, how do people get it? I've been dealing with it for so many years, I can deal with it for more. I don't care. I want to make sure my kids are okay. We know how to treat retroviral infections, and so therefore, uh, this has the potential of completely changing the course of this illness. But the ongoing research may ultimately dash the hopes of Dr. Bell's former patients, some of whom have spent more than half their lives seeking answers. For The Wall Street Journal, I'm Jason Bellini.